The dinosaur clips in this video are from documentaries you can find on CuriosityStream. More on them at the end of the video. Dinosaurs were some of the most powerful builds to ever be introduced to the game. While other factions like the Mammal Guild and Arthropod Guild have come up with some pretty impressive ones, on land, nothing has yet topped the sheer power of the Reptile Guild's greatest achievements. Even though their massive size is perhaps their most notable trait, there was also a ton of variety in the abilities and combat strategies that these builds employed. And so today I think it's finally time to release my dinosaur tier list. Obviously there's a ton of dinosaur builds, so there's no way I can cover all of them but I definitely will try to hit the important ones. It's worth noting that the reign of the dinosaur faction lasted more than twice as long as the reign of the mammal faction that supplanted them. And so during this huge stretch of time, dinosaur maids basically tried out every conceivable strategy, and that's why there are so many builds to talk about. But as always, we'll start from the bottom of the tier list and move up from there. At the bottom we've got Dryosaurus and Camptosaurus, two very similar herbivore builds with an interesting stat spread. Dinosaurs are known for their immense strength, but neither of these builds boast any sort of offensive capabilities. Instead, they have a modest but below average defensive spread, decent mobility, and above average intelligence for a dinosaur. These builds took advantage of how powerful the other herbivore builds were by sticking by the bulkier ones and relying on them to defend the herd. They also took advantage of the fact that they were faster than other herbivores, even though their mobility was lower than most predator builds. Their higher intelligence granted them more advanced perception, letting them function as the herd lookouts. But nonetheless, these builds were helpless on their own, and were easy targets for predator mains if they were ever caught undefended. Their lack of self-sufficiency puts them in F tier, in my opinion. I think they realized this though, because later on, this faction started specking into either extra armor on their heads, or spikes on their thumbs, giving them much better options for dealing with aggressive players. In D tier, we've got two carnivore builds, the first being Coelophysis. Coelophysis was one of the first dinosaur builds that the devs introduced, and like all of the early dinosaurs, it really was nowhere near the power level of the ones that would be added to the game later in the Jurassic and Cretaceous expansions. The only reason it became such a popular and dominant build was because it starved and dehydrated more slowly than its non-dinosaur rivals. And this isn't to say that it didn't struggle to succeed too, it absolutely did, and often had to resort to team killing just to get by. Betrayal. It sort of dominated the early dino meta by default, so I'm not going to rate it any higher than D tier. Also in D tier we have Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is a unique build that specced heavily into fishing abilities and aquatic adaptations, including the rare ability of Electroreception, which helped it catch fish players even when they were in stealth mode. This is great for that specific application, but Spinosaurus mains weren't actually fully aquatic, they couldn't breathe underwater, and still had to spend plenty of their gameplay, dealing with the challenges of being a terrestrial build. And unfortunately, their stats and abilities leave a lot to be desired in terms of contending with the terrestrial meta at that time. Because they'd spent so many evolution points adapting their build to be able to fish, they'd secured themselves a unique niche at the cost of being able to hold their own in general combat. They'd get bodied by most other carnivore mains, and outsped by most herbivore mains, leaving them in an awkward position. If they'd had more time, they might have been able to gain enough experience to spec into a fully aquatic build, but unfortunately the devs decided to up the overworld temperature, raising the sea levels but drying up the rivers, leaving the Spinosaurus player base without a niche. The lesson here is that if you ever find yourself specking into the playstyle of an amphibian, you may want to reconsider how you're spending your evolution points. Last in D tier we have the Hadrosaurs. Now I don't have a ton to say about these builds. Generally their main game plan is pretty simple, see a predator coming and run away. This is pretty similar to the Dryosaurus and Camptosaurus playstyle I mentioned in F tier, but instead of relying on the more powerful herbivores to defend them, they had the HP required to shrug off a hit or two, and actually had the mobility required to escape, assuming they saw the attack coming. Overall this build was pretty easy to play but had a low skill ceiling as well since they had no actual combat abilities. All in all, there's a reason players consider Hadrosaurs more forgettable among dinosaur builds. In C tier we've got two of the most famous Jurassic builds. The first is Stegosaurus. 
Taking a quick look at the Stegosaurus' stats, it's clear that this build was extreme on many fronts. It had one of the lowest intelligence levels of any dinosaur, and also didn't exactly have much in terms of mobility either. However, it had pretty incredible combat stats and powerful abilities to back it up. Most notably, its backplates and thagomizer. Their backplates significantly reduce the chance of an attacker scoring a critical hit against them, since it's much harder to bite down on a Stegosaurus' weak point when there are plates in the way. Their backplates can also be flushed with blood to grant a large intimidation buff, which works great against predator and herbivore mains alike. The Thagomizer is one of the most unique weapons of any dinosaur build. The Thagomizer has one of the highest critical hit chances of any weapon in the game, often dealing enough damage to one-shot most players. Because it's a tail spike, this attack has a lot of reach, making approaching a defending Stegosaurus player extremely difficult. However, the strategy was by no means perfect. Their low mobility made fleeing from battle impossible, so if an enemy did not want to subvert its defenses, Stegosaurus mains would be out of options. And since their tails weren't long enough to cover an attack from the front, that was often their downfall. Thankfully, their base game plan was relatively simple, so their low intelligence didn't hinder them too much. Also in C tier, we have every Stegosaurus main's arch enemy, Allosaurus. The Allosaurus build was unique in that it actually invested very little into the bite attack, only having the bite strength of a lion. Instead, Allosaurus dealt damage by using its head like a battle axe, swinging its open jaw down onto an enemy player. This dealt heavy damage but was nowhere near the devastating power of some of the top tier dinosaur combat moves. It had the highest top speed of any build during its time, but had relatively low stamina, meaning it could only sprint for a short time, also similar to lions today. While one-on-one, -on -one, Allosaurus tended to get bodied by the stronger herbivore players of its time, in packs that could take down just about anything. Overall, a solid mid-tier, whose strategies got expanded upon and refined by the later dinosaur builds. In B-tier, we have a few builds which did the exact opposite of what Allosaurus did, in that they put a ton of evolution points into a single combat tactic. First, the build which specced into the claw skill tree, granting it the longest claws to ever exist in the game, Therizinosaurs. Therizinosaurs were excellent in 1v1 combat, because their claws gave them incredible reach and damage, perfect for slicing at the heads of carnivore mains that were trying to bite them. Their slash attack was the strongest the game had ever seen. In fact, they put so many points into the claw skill tree that they had none left over for teeth or mobility, and were actually forced to change teams from the carnivore side to the herbivore side, making them the only build from the theropod faction to opt not to be a predator. This actually worked out really well for them, because they no longer had to compete with the other predator mains for XP and were also taller than most herbivore players typically seen in the forest biomes. Sure, they were lacking in intelligence and mobility, and also couldn't actually gain any experience from the enemies that they defeated with their claws, but all in all, they had a surprisingly effective strategy. Not a perfect defense, as they were definitely still vulnerable to coordinated assaults, but definitely an above average build. On the opposite end of the spectrum from Allosaurus and Therizinosaurus, both of which had either weak or non-existent bite damage, we have the carnivore build that put all of its evolution points into maxing out the bite attack, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. T-Rex had the most powerful bite attack in the history of the game, able to take out any player it was able to bite in a single hit. This also gave it the ability to crush bone, letting it access the XP-rich marrow inside, similar to what hyenas do in today's meta. T-Rex was a hybrid between a predator and scavenger build. It didn't have the greatest luck taking down the heavily armored herbivores of the Cretaceous expansion, but it could certainly defeat them if the T-Rex players worked in a group. And as a scavenger, its massive size gave it the ability to steal kills from other carnivore players who had no hope of surviving its devastating bite if they got in its way. T-Rex did however have to sacrifice all of its other offensive strengths in order to maximize its bite damage. Its arms were so short that its claw attack had pathetic range, making them useless both for holding prey and fighting rivals for territory. And it also wasn't particularly fast outside of short bursts of speed. So if players saw it coming, which wasn't that hard because of its massive size, they wouldn't have too tough a time avoiding it. Still, with team strats, it was near unstoppable, and it always had the option to fall back on scavenging, so it was definitely a solid high tier. The last B tier build I want to talk about is Triceratops. In terms of defense in a single direction, no build has ever come close to Triceratops. Their horns can deal massive damage in a single swing, even to giant carnivore builds like T-Rex. Looking at its stats, it's pretty clear that going head-to-head -head with this thing would end badly. However, one thing I've noticed is that players nowadays fail to remember its main drawback, low intelligence. This thing was pretty close to a modern-day opossum in terms of brain power, and as many of you should know from my Australia video, marsupials are some of the least intelligent mammals. People assume Triceratops behaved similar to a modern-day elephant, since both are about the same size and sport powerful front-facing weaponry. 
However, the herd behavior that makes elephants so untouchable by predators was absent in the Triceratops build as they were mostly solitary, and this was due to their low intelligence stat. Because of that, they were highly vulnerable from being attacked from behind, or from multiple angles at once. Triceratops' low intelligence also meant that it was easily tricked into walking into ambushes set by carnivore mains, which pretty much always meant a game over for the Triceratops. As powerful as this build is, and it is powerful, don't get me wrong, I think it's definitely not a top tier dinosaur and caps out at B tier. Okay, so in A tier we've got the dinosaurs which were a bit smarter about how they invested their evolution points. First we have the Dromaeosaurs, the faction of dinosaurs that includes builds like Velociraptor, Deinonychus, and Utah Raptor. These players made an interesting choice to forego the gigantism ability that made dinosaurs so dominant in the first place and try their hand at more of an evasive rushdown playstyle, sacrificing both their HP and defense stats to buff their mobility and DPS as best they could. Most notably, they specced into buffing a single claw on each foot, which had two important functions. The first being that it could deal massive slash and stab type damage, and the second being that it gave them the ability to hook onto players that they were targeting using the pounce attack. Overall, this build had much higher damage than normal for a build that size, and could easily take down players in a much higher weight class, especially if they attacked in a group, which they often did. They had the ability to weave in and out of their opponent's attack range easily, letting them bait out and dodge attacks. The one main drawback to this build was that if it ever got careless, they could easily take lethal damage in a single hit. But overall, this faction was one of the most successful at the time and easily A tier. Also in A tier we have Carcharodontosaurus, a build very similar to T-Rex in terms of appearance, but with a slightly different plan of attack. Instead of investing purely into Bite Force, maxing out base damage, Carcharodontosaurus spent its evolution points specking into advanced, serrated teeth. This gave their bite attack an increased chance to cause the heavy bleed status effect, which would drain the target's HP and stamina over time. This was more cost effective than pure bite force, and let them retain enough evolution points to spec into claws too, giving them a more well-rounded combat style that could still cause lethal damage from a single bite. This strategy is similar to the one seen employed by the Komodo Dragon player base of today's meta. Carcharodontosaurus was also one of the tankier carnivore builds and could shrug off a hit or two even from the builds that would normally devastate anything that they landed a hit on. This made them extremely good at PvP against the other carnivore builds at the time, making them an easy high tier candidate. The next build I have in A tier is Ankylosaurus, perhaps the best tank build ever to exist in the game. This build essentially took the Segasaurus' strategy and cranked it up to the most extreme it could. Instead of backplates for intimidation, the Ankylosaur players specced into armor, and instead of tail spikes they opted for a club. Their armor was so impenetrable that it made attacks from even the strongest carnivore mains pretty laughable. While their club didn't have a high crit chance like the tail spikes did, it did do massive damage that could shatter bone, capable of crippling any player unfortunate to take a direct hit from it. Ankylosaurus was near invincible except that it had one glaring flaw. Despite all of its defense and power, it was completely helpless if a player managed to flip it over. For that reason, I can't place it in top tier, because a good top tier will have no surefire counterplay. Last in A tier we have Troodon. The Troodon build was the only dinosaur build whose core strategy was based around the intelligence stat. Sure, other dinosaurs used team strategies or had advanced perception skills, both of which require some usage of intelligence, but Troodon was the only one to specifically tailor their build around having its brain be its best weapon. Troodon had to sacrifice a lot to get this. High intelligence requires a lot of calories to maintain, so getting the kills required to sustain both a large size and a large brain was impossible, meaning that they had to give up gigantism as a trait. So instead of powerful dagger-like claws, Troodon opted for smaller but opposable claws that could be used to pick up objects. This severely cut its potential in combat, but gave it a lot of options in terms of manipulating its environment to, for example, set up traps to catch players that would otherwise be able to evade them. It's very possible that if non-avian dinosaurs weren't banned in the Meteor Strike balance patch, Troodon players would have eventually leveled up their intelligence enough to become top tiers similar to humans. But even though it was starting to gain the power to dominate its environment, it still had no way to combat the other top tiers aside from just running away, so it definitely wasn't S tier. In S tier, we have the most overpowered dinosaur faction of all, the Sauropods. Sauropods had every tool they needed to counter all other dinosaur builds. They had the maximum HP stat possible for a terrestrial build, and because they used the herd strategy, oftentimes this meant that if a sauropod player was caught off guard and was under attack by several carnivore players, it could usually tank enough hits that its teammates would have time to rescue it. And of all the dinosaurs, sauropods also had the largest attack range. 
Their whip-like tails may have not had the same damage per hit that Stegosaurus or Ankylosaurus did, but they were still plenty powerful, able to knock down enemies well out of reach of a counterattack. And if they did get too close, a sauropod stop attack was literally the most devastating move in the game, knocking the target down and dealing lethal damage. Lastly, their extreme height gave them a massive advantage for avoiding stealth attacks, as they could see much further than other players. In terms of land superiority, sauropods truly were the most overpowered dinosaurs of all time. It's unfortunate that the devs chose to ban the dinosaurs during the KT balance patch, but alas, the meta was getting stale so I understand why. Hopefully you enjoyed this look back at the Mesozoic meta. If you enjoy watching videos about dinosaurs, there are a bunch of great documentaries I can recommend. For example, if you're curious about Troodon and why it was the smartest dinosaur ever, I have to recommend Leaps in Evolution, a documentary detailing the evolution of brains and intelligence. But if you just want a good, fun dinosaur story, one of my personal favorites is The Ballad of Big Al, a documentary that follows the life story of a single Allosaurus as it learns to hunt and survive in the Jurassic. Both of these great films have recently been added to CuriosityStream, a streaming service dedicated to serving up thousands of the absolute best nonfiction titles. Normally, the subscription is $2.99 a month, but CuriosityStream is offering all TierZoo viewers a full month trial for free. Just head to curiositystream.com slash tierzoo and use promo code tierzoo to get access. Thank you all so much for watching. This was my longest video to date, and there's no way I could justify the time spent on these videos without the support of my patrons on Patreon and sponsors like CuriosityStream. So huge thanks to both of them. Until next time, good luck out there.